Welcome to the Mars Incubator. This habitat is created from in situ materials for efficient construction and provides a safe and robust environment for human life on Mars. It consists of four distinguished volumes separated into functional zones. The first volume is a vestibule for surface deployment via suits and rovers. The second and primary volume contains lab space, ECLS systems, a sanitation facility, a food prep area, and accommodations for crew members. The third volume is a flexible space for multiple activities and the fourth volume is the biogeneration area designated for plant growth. All of these are connected with adjustable bridges that are welded into place. Before any volumes are placed, the external support structures are formed by adding successive layers of laser-melted basalt fiber in a fused deposition. Next, the lower panels of the habitat exterior are placed on the external supports. These panels are made from regolith and polyethylene and are reinforced with impact-resistant fibers. The properties of these materials allow for effective pressure retention and protection from impacts and radiation. This process allows for multiple configurations of the panels to be manufactured with the same process and equipment. With the lower panels in place, the internal components can be assembled on top. These parts are comprised of long fiber reinforced polyethylene, molded, cut, and thermoformed into the appropriate shapes using a heated press. This results in a rigid yet versatile material. The habitat is designed to be modular both inside and out to fit the needs of the facility. Once all the external panels have been placed, a tensioning device cinches the anchor points of the adjacent panels together. Let's take a look inside. In the vestibule, there are entry ports for both hatch and suit deployment. This volume was designed with standalone pressurization equipment to enable direct deployment to the surface. As with all secondary volumes, an emergency supply of pressurization gas is located below the floor in case of a primary system failure. Moving into the primary volume, to our left we have a sample processing area. This wet lab space can be used to conduct experimentation on the samples geologists collect. Behind us on the opposite side of the entrance is the dry lab, outfitted with computers and other analysis equipment. Ahead of us we enter the primary storage area with space for food and other items. The room over is the sanitation facility, where occupants can maintain personal hygiene. On the other side is a food prep area. Past that is a multi-purpose volume which can be arranged for communal dining, communication, recreation, and other activities. Progressing upstairs grants access to the biogeneration lab, where we can observe the first plants on Mars. It has extra MEPS capacity to sustain an independent hydrologic cycle for botanical life. At the top of the stairs, we find the crew accommodations and ample room for more storage. Back downstairs, we can take a look at perhaps the most important space. The heart of the habitat is the ECLS system housed on the bottom third of the primary volume. The space below the deck is divided into sections for each of the required operations, HVAC, water management, oxygen generation, and power distribution. The heating and cooling unit pushes air through the habitat and connects to a MEPS port, exposing a heat exchanger to the external environment. The water systems occupy the most space with a fresh water reservoir, a treatment system, and a waste containment volume. The oxygen generation system breathes CO2 and siphons water from the reservoir to produce oxygen for the crew and methane for fuel. Power for the habitat will be drawn from a kilopower insulation, connected through a MEPS unit, and distributed throughout the volume. The Mars Incubator offers a modular design, efficient construction, and a viable living area for a productive and comfortable mission to Mars.